All right, what's up, Turtle Riders? No sound, people are saying? Great. Awesome. Fantastic. That's great. I don't know how the hell it works. I really don't know how that works. We've been working on this a long time. I can't figure it out for the life of me. It is what it is. Okie dokie. So uh, I'm going to go ahead right now. I just shared the link to this on the Clarence Woods Emerson page, what it is, as well as the Uncle Turtle Boy page. So go ahead, share it up, let people know we're live out there, and like those pages if you haven't already. Also, get at me on Twitter. What the hell is my Twitter name? I am, uh, let's see, my Twitter name is at TB underscore Aiden. That's at TB underscore Aiden, A-I-D-A-N. I've been back on Twitter for over three months now, somehow. So using a freaking new uh, browser. I can't use Google Chrome. I'm banned on that browser. I'm banned on Safari. So now i got to use a new browser. I'm using uh, Firefox. I don't know what happens if I, they figure me out there. But it's been three months. So follow me while you can. I'm at TB underscore Aiden. I would share it on Parlor too, at Turtle Boy. But, you know, we're going to get into that today. doesn't exist anymore because, fuck it, the tech cuts have decided that uh, there cannot be any competition for, uh, you know, Twitter and Facebook in the uh, webosphere, if you will. All right. So anyway. Do me a favor also and like this and smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. We're closing in on 13,000 subscribers, so get on that. The revolution grows. It continues. Uh, if anybody wants to call in tonight, uh, I'm going to put a StreamYard link in here. If anybody wants to join the fun, the discussion, boom, there it is right there. All right, so let's get this party started, shall we? First thing we're going to talk about, who had 9-10 in the pool? Whoever had that was a winner tonight. Okay. Um, let's talk about this guy in Fall River. I just got to talk about this, dude, because this guy is a trip, man. This guy is a trip. Okay, there he is right there. <laughs> this fucking guy. Okay, so uh, on Facebook, he goes by Mike Stadium, uh, but his name is Mike St. Pierre. And Mike St. Pierre, uh, I wrote about this guy, like, not that long ago. There was an incident at his store in which he just refused to pay the uh, fine that he got for allegedly not wearing, you know, making his employees wear masks. And he would uh, respond using his company name saying, the simple solution is to stop, is to shop somewhere else if you're a pansy ass. You know, I, I like that kind of thing. I'm into that kind of thing because I'm not a mascot myself. I think it's freaking stupid. I don't, don't think it fixes anything and whatever. So I appreciate people like that. However, uh, it appears this guy is not my type of guy after all, and I'll be the first one to admit it, and that is why you come to Turtle Boy. So uh, there was the incident, obviously, at the Capitol last week, uh, the insurrection. It's the new buzzword of the week, insurrection. It wasn't an insurrection, okay? It wasn't a coup. It was just a bunch of morons. It's all they were, freaking morons and savages with no plan. Like, you're giving them too much credit. Like, an insurrection and a coup – has like a plan. Like there are African warlords right now who are literally offended by the terminology being used right here. Like that is not, no, I've seen coups before. That ain't no coup. <laughs> that ain't no coup. That's just a bunch of uh, rednecks who uh, are blinded by untruths. And I'm, and I'm glad we can now all admit that it's not true. I'm glad we can all admit like Trump lost the election. Like, I've been saying it for months now. He fucking lost. All these morons. At least they're getting off the train one by one. I'm starting to see him. And they were so convinced that, oh, we, trust me, once the Kraken comes out, once they, they un, unleash the Kraken, wait till Rudy Giuliani shows you up at his sleeve. And Tucker Carlson started calling this out like over a month ago. Tucker said, where's the evidence? Like, is, can you show us something? And MAGA people got, no, no, no. How did... Don't you dare ask them to – Tucker, you libtide, fake conservative. That's what you got for questioning. Like you say you all all this evidence of voter fraud and you're kind of getting us excited about it. Can we see some voter fraud? Just a little bit? A little bit of – can you show us something? And they couldn't do it. They failed every court case they had. And as it turns out, like there was no plan. 
There was no plan. Trump didn't even have a fucking plan for this. That's why he got caught on tape calling the Secretary of State of Georgia up saying, hey, I need 11,780 votes. Sit, sit. All I need, you don't have to go overboard. You don't have to go 12,000. Just 11,780 votes. I just need you to find those for me. That was that was his plan the whole time, is find votes, as it turns out. So if you hitched your train to that wagon, just understand that you were lied to. Now, I didn't even mind the lying that much because Trump lies a lot, and I just don't give a shit. All I cared about was how it governed the country, which I thought he did a fine job of doing. So I didn't really care. Like, Trump lied. Like, oh, my inauguration was so much bigger than Barack Obama's. We all know it wasn't. We, we're not blind. We can see the pictures, right? We, we know that. But you're just like, who cares? Like, who cares if he's lying about that? The country's good. We're all set. Economy's good. Things are fine. Taxes are down. Who cares about any of that stuff? Well, then he lost the election because of COVID and mail-in voting. We know that. Not because of, like, widespread voter fraud. There was no more fraud in this election than there were in any other election. It was just they got – you gave them three months to vote. When you give Democrats three months to do anything, they're going to do it. This is what these people do. They run elections. They're not good at governing, but they're really good at getting elected. So you gave them all this time. They won. And now we are, lit. if you guys recall, the week after this happened, I put a meme up on Facebook and I had like a uh, picture of one of those liberals crying for the first time. And I said, this is you right now. If you're, don't be this chick, don't become a meme. That's what I said. Don't become a meme. Turtle boy, you're giving up. What do you mean? Okay. So explain this to me. I never understood this. Like, how am I supposed to, uh, like how, what am I supposed to do? Like, don't give up. Okay, so what do I do? What what do I what are you doing? What are you doing to not give up? I don't I can't vote again. I live in Massachusetts anyway, my vote doesn't really matter. So what am I supposed to do? Post about it on Facebook? Just complain about fraud? Is that is that how I fight back? Is that what I'm supposed to do? I don't I never was told how I'm supposed to fight. <laughs> you know, just like, well, you need to fight. Okay, so what does that mean? So I'm gonna go to Go to like a rally or something with Diana Ploss. And I'm going to say, not my president. What, what am I supposed to do? There was no plan the whole time. There was no plan. Storm the Capitol. Yeah, that, that's what I'm supposed to say. Prove the fraud. Like, yeah, prove the fraud. Yeah, it's like so. And Andrew's on my side here, obviously. He's like saying, prove the fraud. It's easy to claim. But where's, exactly. Where's the proof? Like, am I supposed to find the fraud? Is that Because I'm the journalist. I'm supposed to do it. Because I think Trump pays these attorneys a lot of money. And if, if they can't do it, talk about fleecing. You you think some of the people that screwed me over, like some of these people that are suing me, are doing it to like, you know, run up the bill on their clients? We've, we've had a couple of those. Nobody ran up the bill better than Sidney What's-Her-Name and Rudy G on Donald Trump. <laughs> they probably made like a couple million dollars. They're like, oh, this guy's a fucking moron. We'll just tell him. We got the Kraken. We got the Kraken. He'll think that sounds cool. He'll think that sounds cool. Like they got something up their sleeve. And then when we don't get it, we'll just blame it on liberal judges or something. Obama appointed these judges. Some some shit like that. They were literally just. Uh, that's it. It's like what what am I supposed to do here? But anyway, some of these people. So like the longer this went on, I feel like the more the jig was up. But there were still people that were like willing to go to this rally on Saturday, or Wednesday, whatever it was. Now. If you went to the rally, I don't really care. I have nothing against that. Quite frankly, like it's kind of taking part in something interesting, like historical. I don't know. It's not like important, if you will. Like it's not gonna change anything. But I, if I was in the area, I'd go because it's entertaining. You know, it's, it's entertaining. I'd go to any, any I go to any freaking protest where the people are entertaining. See what's going on. Get some good content for the blog. Why wouldn't I? But. You know, we go to, and by the way, the, um, if you guys feel like donating, the uh, super chat's open. If you put it up here, I will read off whatever you put up there. That's how it works. Um, freestyle will save for the weekend, though. But anyway, I would go to it, but uh, a lot of these people that went to it, they were um, morons, quite frankly. Uh, and we've seen a couple people lose their job. We did a story on it the other day about the woman uh, whose own daughter ratted on her. Fucking bitch. Unbelievable. 
And by the way, she now is a GoFundMe that woman for um, ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars that she's she's made off of that for her college funds. So, anyway, this idiot decides that he's going to go down there, uh, Mike St. Pierre, and he's gone to. I don't know. I don't know what he's playing. So let's watch the video and see what he does here, shall we? Let me blow this up. Uh, expose some ratchets and stop being a snitch for money. Oh no, I didn't make any money off of this. I, I was I snitched for free on this guy. So let's uh, let's see what he does here. So uh, Mike Stadium, there he is posting about like, do you honestly think I'm done? About Trump, yes, sir. I'll be there with bells on, because you know, miss, you know, he's he's sending out things about like uh, he's selling um, shirts for Stop the Steal. He's uh, posting Washington, here we come, booked for the fifth and sixth of January at Trump International Hotel, expecting millions <laughs> to be there. And he's like, yeah, buddy. He's attaching himself to Lynn Wood. If you're not familiar with Lynn Wood, he's a real gem. He's a real gem. Thank you, Lionel Meeks. He says. Shout out to my boy, Dave Leone. Shout out, Dave. Absolutely freaking Lulu. Um, anyway, uh, Lynn Wood is a, is a lunatic. He's He was kicked off of Twitter. Not that that's hard to do. But I think he even got censored on Parler because uh, he started saying some things about um, killing, assassinating Mike Pence and, like, the Illuminati and, like, crazy fucking shit. Crazy shit. This is actually the Covington lawyer, the guy that represented the Covington kids and. Uh, one, but he, he's clearly on something or I don't know what's going on with this, but this guy writes, and I wish I saw this post. I'm taking bets for the election. If you think Biden gets inaugurated on January 20th and you're so intelligent, I'll put up $500 that Trump is reelected. Who's confident enough to bet me? I wish I saw that guy. So I bet this guy in a heartbeat, heartbeat, 500 free bucks right there. Yeah. And this guy is so far river hurts. Anyway. He's got some videos from there, and he's like, look at all these people. And uh, here, here's a video of uh, that he decided to take while he was there. Not smart, by the way. Aaron, what's up, brother? That- Nobody wears masks out here. These are patriots. They're not, scared of, they're not scared of the pandemic. Sorry. Fucking two. That's where the meeting ground is. Hopefully they bust through, and I'll, I'll join them and rush the Capitol. And go grab Nancy Pelosi by the hair fucking twirl her around. Now watch We're this. In. We are almost in. There he goes. That's him. That's him. If you want to see that one more time, let's check it out. Uh, again, here we go. This is just him throwing the thing. So there's this guy, like the guy with the patched, the spots on his head, throwing shit in there. It looks like there's doors in there. I don't know. He's throwing shit in there. Runs inside. Oh, there he is. There, There's our boy. He just goes up and he throws what appears to be, I don't know if it's a rock or a smoke thing, but he, he tosses it in there. And he tosses it good. And he's like, walks away like a bitch, kind of runs away. At least own it. At least this guy just stood there and did it over and over and over again. And this is the United States Capitol building. You're like literally laying siege to it. Do these seem like the kind of guys that have like a plan? I mean, think about it. They imagine, imagine seizing the United States Capitol building, having it all to yourselves and then not declaring yourself like leaders of the new Republic and then having Nancy Pelosi arrested. That's what, that's what I would have done. If I was doing a coup, if you're going to do a coup, do it right. All right. Make yourself king. You can do whatever you want. You're in charge. You have Nancy Pelosi's desk. Have them all arrested. But they didn't. They just threw rocks and took their pictures and waved Trump flags and shit. So uh, I don't know. He, uh, this was not wise. Also, if you're going to like, you know, do something like this, don't. What is with people video? T- you don't, not everything has to be live stream guys. Like not everything. You can just like foment insurrection, like anonymously or like on your own. If you want, you don't have to put it on your page because whether or not you believe this, it is actually against the law. You're not allowed to, to do this, but they went and did it anyway. And uh, that's not smart. Now is his page still up? Let's see if his page is still up. Let's uh, check out his, 
Let me go check on his page. Data. Mike, last name. Um, does he go by on there? I might draw a blank. Mike Stadium. Mike Stadium. Is it gone? Is his page gone? Oh, there it is. Okay, his page is still there, but it is completely clean now. He's got nothing up there anymore. Everything's gone. So if you guys want to see his page here, I'm why even keep it up? That's what I want to know. Boom, right there. Done. Okay. If it's not live and it's not on Facebook, it never happened. That's a good point. Um, who's Lance? Is there? There's a Lance in here. Aiden, where is Suzanne? Who's this guy? Who's this guy? <laughs> Okie dokie. Anyway, I heard someone stole Nancy uh, Pelosi's computer. That's another. You, they should. How are you going to go in there and not steal Nancy Pelosi's computer if it's right there? And again, what kind of coup is this? Oh, FBI visited him today. Can I ask how you know that? Can I ask how you know that, Ma? That's interesting. That's interesting. I don't even know why. He, I mean. He should go to jail for this. I'm not going to lie. You cannot just declare war in the United States Capitol. And and I and I feel the same way about the looters that did this to Macy's and all these stores. Like, if you participated in a stunt like this, like, you deserve to go to jail, period. And including this guy, just more so for the idiocy. Not only that, he also basically, you can't even say that it's like spur of the moment. We're storming the Capitol. It's like you feel like like Will Ferrell could do this better in, in old school. We're going to this. We're going to the House and the Senate. <laughs> going straight in. Um. All right. So uh, Adam Hurst says, "I feel like you. I'm in the middle of a 30 day ban on Facebook, and now on Twitter account got permanently suspended. Wow. Got to start all over. There you go. Um. I, I feel your pain, man. So." He's, he's, uh, I feel like he should go to jail. You guys think he should go to jail? Give me a one in the comments if you think he should go to jail, two if he shouldn't go to jail. Go. But whatever you do, don't like the fact that you're announcing your plans on the way there, like we're going to storm the Capitol, that means it's premeditated. And you're like, my goal in there is to physically assault the Speaker of the House of Representatives. So one, two, 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 one, two, two. Okay. One, no, no. Okay. Oh, I would say, let's see. It's, Looks like most people think you should go to jail. Most people. So, um, yeah, so that's uh, interesting. So let's talk about the other thing. Let's talk about the tech gods because this is one I uh, was really fired up about today. We got to talk about this. This one's just been on my mind a lot because I didn't get to talk about the Trump ban much the other day. It happened the same day as the Rachel Rollins story, but we got to talk about it. So, as you guys know, I wrote a book that's literally about this topic. I invented tech censorship. I've been getting censored by tech companies since before it was cool. Starting in like 2016, I started getting 30 day bans because we were introduced to a guy by the name of Kevin Lynch. If you don't know who Kevin Lynch is, you must be new here. Kevin Lynch is like the, uh, one of the, probably the greatest agitator in turtle boy sports history, as far as like done the most damage. Him and Didi Delgado probably, but more so Lynch. Like Lynch was more dedicated to taking down Turtle Boy. Like Didi Delgado took down our Facebook page and then that was it. She sucks, but that was it. Kevin Lynch didn't stop. Kevin Lynch went on for like years, years of just admitting that he, he came on our live show and he admitted that he – he spends three hours a day just reporting our pages. Like it was getting to the point where we couldn't post anything without Kevin Lynch, just mass reporting it and getting our page taken down. And I'm so happy that we just settled up with him because he was not worth, he was not worth it. He was not worth the headache. I'm like, like fuck Kevin Lynch. I don't even want to talk about Kevin Lynch anymore, but he is the first guy that made me realize like we got a problem here with Facebook. Cause I was becoming dependent on it and it just kept getting these like bands. Like first it was a one day ban, then a three day ban, then a seven day ban, then a 30 day ban. And every time I got a 30 day ban, I couldn't reach people. Cause this was like how I, like when I share shit on social media and it takes off, if the right account, like the blog we're going to talk about right now, it got a lot of traffic today. Not cause of Facebook actually, because of Twitter. 
on the Turtle Boy Sports account, which I don't run, at Turtle Boy Tweets, they tweet it out. And they're followed by Mike Cernovich, who has like 600,000 followers, Mindy Robinson, who has 250,000 followers. Those guys retweeted it. And then Jack uh, Jack Probosiak picks it up. He's got over a million followers. They retweet it. So the power of social media is, I, I can tell you firsthand, no media outlet can survive without social media. You can't do it in this day and age. They're like, they, they don't even care about like newspapers and stuff like that anymore. It's all about online now. And you cannot, how do you get seen online? What are you going to create an email list? How do you grow that way? How do you get new people to see it? A lot of new people, thousands of new people today who had never seen Turtle Boy Sports in their life saw it for the first time because of social media. It's that important. And the story that I was sharing, quite frankly, is important because it's a story that's not being told and the media is lying to us about it. So it's really important to get this stuff out there. So after I started getting the pages taken down, 30 day bans, 30 day bans, all this shit. And I'm growing on Twitter too. That's grown. Uh, on October 30th, 2017, the Twitter account at Turtle Boy Tweets, I mean, uh, at Turtle Boy Sports was just taken down and never came back. I've created a couple new accounts since then. Some of them have grown to like five. One got up to like 9,000 turtle riders on it. And then it was taken down. So, and then I got permanently banned by Twitter. I had to literally buy a new computer in order to get back on there. I was banned for two years, but I'm, I'm there. I'm, a, I'm alive. Well, on Facebook's different. I've never been permanently banned from Facebook, but we've lost over 50 pages, including one on November 28th, 2017, that had 112,000 followers. That's insane. That was, I mean, those were the days, 112,000 followers. Terrible, it was hot. Not only that, but I was looking back on it. We were gaining 1,000 followers every three days, 1,000 followers. So over 300 new likes per day on that page. If you do the math out with that, that is um, over 100,000 a year was the pace I was going at for growth. So, and it would probably grow exponentially. We'd be looking at right now over half a million people on the Facebook page. Half a million. The ability to reach half a million people with just like by hitting a button is worth so, it's so valuable to, to be able to do that towards everything. Not only do you get more views and more ad revenue that way, but you gain more influence. More people find out about you. And so in my line of work without social media, you can't survive. Like who does what I do without social media? Who does what I do? There's a couple people that are like more blacklisted than I am. Alex Jones, Laura Loomer, Milo. But who even, oh, I forgot about Milo. Because Milo's, <laughs> Milo's a parlor guy. It's the only place he can go. Some of these people, all they got is parlor. Like when I first found out about parlor and I got on there, I'm like, oh shit, I forgot about that dude. Fuck yeah. Oh, that fucking guy's here too. The Krasenstein brothers are here. Oh shit. It was like the gates of hell had opened up and you walk in there and you're like, oh, it's a party. Oh, I like this place. This has potential. I was a big fan. The The downside was there's no liberals. So it kind of killed it, but it was a good time in there while well, lasted. Anyway, uh, the Facebook pages all get taken down over some bullshit. My, like I never violated any of the rules. I would just get mass reported. And I used to think that, like, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to this. Like a human being is not reviewing this. And I still somewhat feel that way. However, I do feel like I'm on, the, I've been on their radar for a while now. And once your page or your IP or whatever is flagged, is problematic, you're just going, you get reported enough, they're taking you down, period. They don't care. They're just doing that. Stupid. It's unfair, but it is what it is. Now, whenever I would complain about this, and I complained about it a lot. Maybe a little bit too much, but I did. I mean, it affects everything. I was like fucking depressed when I lost the Facebook page. I'm like, I can't fucking grow. I can't gain traffic. Fucking nobody wants to write for me anymore. This fucking sucks, you know? Half the blogs I wrote about were about different pages getting banned. I couldn't even keep up. I'm like, what's the latest page? I don't even know. Oh, castle Protection says it would be easy for Turtle Boy to side with everyone and say storm the castle and Trump won. I'm here for the honesty. I don't always agree with Turtle Boy, but I always read his stuff. Well, thank you, sir. It's very, uh, our ma'am or whoever. 
Uh, very heartfelt. Thank you. And, and that's the thing. It's like, I like to tell it like it is. I'm not afraid to, uh, like the guy I wrote about today, I, I said nice things about him a month ago, two months ago. Now I don't. Mike Gaffney was loyal to Turtle Boy for a long time until I I, I gave an honest assessment. Even my girl Rayla, who I, I still like Rayla, but like I have to be like that one time I didn't agree with her. That doesn't mean I have anything long term against her. Just like that one time I didn't. And you come here because you expect honest takes. If I start giving you telling the things that you want to hear, then I lose my credibility. I lose my ability to, um, you know, have legitimacy, be taken seriously because, oh, the guy's just, you know, he's just a freaking Trump Yahoo. You can't trust anything he says. You don't want to be labeled as that. You know what I mean? Anyway, so whenever this would happen, I would, I'd complain about it. And people would say things like, just use a different social media app. Build your own social media company. Twitter and Facebook are private companies. And my favorite, the next time I hear this, I'm going to jump out a fucking window. It's not a First Amendment violation if the government isn't censoring you. Every fucking time this happens, it's like that's like the first comment you see from everybody. All these First Amendment experts. Actually, actually, it's not a First Amendment violation. No fucking shit, Sherlock. I'm goddamn familiar with the First Amendment. I know how it works. The government can't restrict my speech. I get it. But free speech in and of itself is not a First Amendment thing. Free, free speech is a component of the First Amendment. But it's, it's something that exists in other countries that don't have a First Amendment. The ability to speak freely. Now, where do you draw the line with free speech? Because there has to be lines, right? Can you yell... Fire in a crowded theater. That's the one people always like to bring up. You can't yell crowded, fire in a crowded theater. Actually, you can. Actually, you can. Because that Supreme Court decision was a uh, 1917 decision called Schenck versus the United States. A guy was handing out flyers saying, don't join the war effort. And or don't, you know, don't sign up for the draft. Avoid the draft. Basically resist. And the Supreme Court said, you know what? This is akin, this is dangerous, what this guy is saying. This hurts the United States of America when you tell people not to enter the draft. So that's like yelling fire in a crowded theater. And they ruled against him. You couldn't like speak out against the government during World War I. Is that a good thing? Today, do we do we look back at that? And it was like, yes, that's a good thing. It's a good thing to ban speech by using that metaphor about no of course not it's a bad thing and it has since been overruled so whenever people bring that up i just want to smack them in the fucking head say no i believe it's brandenburg versus ohio has overruled it you can yell fire in a crowded theater you can i know people think you can't you can go into a crowded theater yell fire you will not get arrested it is not against the law so However, one thing like you can't pull a um, another free speech thing you might look at like you can't pull um what you call who's the guy Manson like you can't just give people a bunch of acid and say go kill Sharon Tate you can't do that that's a big no no because that way you're like directing and you're conspiring and you're taking part in a murder you can't big no no big no no you also and and where it really gets tricky and this is the one instance right where i'm like i'm like okay that's a good point the one instance it happened in rwanda in 1964 and if you guys have ever seen the movie hotel rwanda or any movies about the rwandan genocide how it worked was think in that country like 80 it's ethnic like 80 percent of the people were part of an ethnic group called the um the hutus the hutus they're the majority 80 percent, but they were generally impoverished and they didn't do as well Whereas like 18 or 19% of the population was belonged to an ethnic group called the Tutsis. And they were a little bit more educated. They did better for themselves. It's a, I mean, whatever that means in Rwanda, but it was a lot of animosity. The minority didn't like this small majority. And eventually they started like blaming all the problems on them and saying, they started calling them cockroaches and they would take to the airwaves. The Hutus would and say, the cockroaches must be destroyed. And they're just spreading hatred about this ethnic group, the Tutsis. And it literally led to 
I don't even think a single gunshot was fired in this whole thing. Those these people were hacked to death with machetes. It was a fucking genocide. Almost a million Tutsis were killed by the Hutus in 1994 in Rwanda. The United States did not intervene. Bill Clinton decided not to intervene because the previous year in Somalia, 19 Americans had been killed uh, after, uh, if you've ever seen the movie Black Hawk Down, intervening, whatever. So like, that's the one where you look at that and you're like, well, free speech in that case directly led to a whole bunch of people dying, right? Because they took over the airwaves. But at the same time, you wouldn't be able to do that in this country. It's still illegal. That's not yelling crowded in a fi- you know, fire in a crowded theater. That's actually directing mass murder. Like you're giving in explicit directions on we must kill, we must kill. So you can't have that. Anyway, so all these people talking about, you know, the next guy that they swear to God, it's not a first amendment. They think they're so fucking smart when they say that. They think they're like, oh, did you know? Actually. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. We've all heard this before. So don't even use the First Amendment when you're defending free speech or like on the internet because it doesn't apply. But that doesn't mean it shouldn't still be the guiding principle towards these media, social. You got to look at the bigger picture with this. And we'll get into it with the bigger picture really here is. So let's go through the blog I did on this, right? Um, and it's all, it's these libertarians, right? And these... Um, old school conservative Republicans who don't really get the internet along with sadly liberals, like a core tenant of liberalism guys is supposed to be that free speech is all encompassing. It's one of the most important aspects of liberalism. Like classically the American civil Lib- civil liberties union, they formed and got popular in the twenties because of evolution in school during the scopes trial. They didn't, they were like the anti, you know, they wanted separation of church and state. They thought it was, a. they didn't want you to shove it down your face with like, you know, religion and stuff like that. They wanted uh, evolution to be taught in school. That's how the ACLU started. And I don't know where the hell I was going with this. But yeah, even the ACLU realizes that, you know, this, they're, they're a liberal organization and they realize speech is more important than anything. The ACLU has gone to court and defended the Ku Klux Klan before because they are an actual liberal organization that stands for actual, or it's supposed to stand for actual liberal principles. They don't always do that anymore, but that is classically what they did. Today, liberals aren't, they don't care. I don't even think they know that, like what liberalism is supposed to be about. They don't know that now. Because their entire, you ask your average liberal, like, what do you stand for? And the answer is simple. Stopping Donald Trump. That's it. They don't know. Like, that's that's all I know. I I don't care about, I don't have no principles. Just, I don't want Donald Trump in there, whatever it takes. So they don't stand for anything anymore. Nothing. Anyway, uh, Donald Trump had his Twitter account taken down. Now, some people agree with that and some people don't. I obviously do not agree with that. And I would hope and I would like to see some liberals come out and speak out against that. Because, yes, the argument here is that Trump incited a riot. But Trump never actually said, like, raid the Capitol building. He just lied to these people about. But he's been lying for so long and they've never done anything like this. Like, he lies at everything about his crowd sizes. Like, it's just Trump. He's just bullshitting, you know? But these people took it seriously. These idiots. And they stormed, they tried to storm the fucking castle. They uh, killed us. Oh, allegedly, they killed a um, capital guard. We still don't know exactly how he died or what he died of. I've yet to hear any details about that, which is weird. But, I mean, I, I'm certainly of the belief that Trump is to blame for this. And I think most Republicans now do too. Like even Kevin McCarthy... Uh, the House Minority Leader spoke out against Trump today. We recognize that this was wrong. And I don't know if he should be removed from office because what the fuck's the point? There's eight days left. Why are you just trying to start more shit? I think you should resign and let Mike president. I think it'd be cool to have Mike Pence be president for a week just so Joe Biden's 47 instead of 46 because he's probably got a bunch of shit made, a bunch of T-shirts made, like 46, stuff like that. It will be cool just to make him 47. Like, nah, you're 47, bitch. That'd be funny. But 
I, 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 it is what it, I think Trump should resign, but if he doesn't, I don't think he should be kicked out either. Cause what's the fucking point? Why, why, why are you trying to stir up more trouble here? What's this going to cause? He's gone anyway and he's disgraced himself. Uh, he has shown that this is 100% all about him. He's a lot of people who had had his back for a long time, no longer do because of the way he treated Mike Pence. I mean, it was despicable what he did to Mike Pence. Fucking unforgivable, in my opinion. Mike Pence has been so fucking loyal to you. And luckily, Mike Pence did not fall on the sword and suck his dick because he sees a ship. He sees a, a sinking ship and he knows what it looks like. And he's like, I'm not fucking going down like this. Fuck no. He's on his own. <laughs> Good for Mike Pence. Um, how is he to blame? Mike Pence is a traitor. Yeah, Mike Pence is a traitor. Sure thing. And this is the kind of idiocy that you got to deal with. Mike Pence is a traitor. Come on. Mike Pence did his fucking job. Mike Pence could not overturn that election. And if you believe that, sadly, this is what the effects of Donald Trump lying to people looks like. It's a small minority of people, but they believe it for some whatever reason. Nothing like nothing he said has come to fruition. I don't even notice. There's no wall. Remember the wall? Do you see a wall? I don't see any wall. Yeah, you were lied to about that. You were lied to about that. Anyway, um, so people like Angela Merkel, is that, is that how you pronounce it? The, the Chancellor of Germany. People like Glenn Greenwald, who was a huge George Bush critic. He's got like almost 2 million followers, I think, on Twitter. Very liberal guy, but understands is more weary of government tyranny. And and you have to understand that government tyranny can come from either party and tyranny in general can come from anybody. And just because the tyrant takes down somebody that you don't like, doesn't mean it's something to celebrate. And I think she gets that. And I think the ACLU gets that because they put something out about it. Glenn Greenwald and more classical liberals, they understand that. But modern day liberals don't. They just want Trump banned. They don't care. And this is where the argument for the First Amendment comes in. Okay. This is Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin is, you know, the uh, Nikki Haley, Dan Crenshaw, 2024. Uh, thank you for the support, but absolutely not. Nikki Haley can suck my dick with Nikki Haley. Get out of here with that shit. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. Anyway, uh, Joe Manchin is Mr. Moderate. He's kind of the most powerful person in the country right now. He's a Democrat from one of the most conservative states of West Virginia. He vote, He's the only Democrat that voted to confirm Justice Kavanaugh. He voted to confirm all the Trump judges. And uh, Joe, I don't know if he actually Barrett, I don't know, but the other two he definitely did, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh. So Joe Manchin, when he puts something like this out, you know we're fucked. Mr. Moderate, he says, the next 12 days are critical for the preservation of our democracy. Jack, once again, I urge you to suspend Donald Trump's Twitter account in the interest of our national security and public interest, blah, blah. So, first of all, the mere fact that a United States senator, one of the most powerful people in the country, has to ask this fucking tool bag, this hippie tool bag with a nose ring and a long beard like Rutherford B. Hayes, that Joe Manchin has to beg Jack Dorsey for something. Shows you who's really calling the shots in this country. Shows you who the people with actual power are. It ain't Joe Manchin. It ain't Donald Trump. It's the tech companies. In case you haven't noticed, Donald Trump has been silenced, essentially, by five people. <laughs> Tim Cook, Jeff Bezos, um, the Indian guy from Google, whatever his name is. Um, Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey. The five of them have essentially silenced them. Murph Dog says the new side of the government will reimburse inauguration invitees for the in expense of buying a bulletproof vest if they want to buy one. Okay, excellent. Um, so the mere fact that you have to ask him for something like what if Twitter isn't that big of a deal, right? If it's not like the public square where everyone is, then why would you want to silence him? Like, why? If it's not. It's just fucking social media. You don't have to do it. It's not that big of a deal. Why are you trying to silence him? So he puts that out. Literally hours later, Twitter announces that they are banning Donald Trump. And they said, thank you, Twitter, for taking this action. We must come together as a country to heal. Yeah, they want to come heal. Bullshit. Fucking heal. Uh, these people don't want to heal. They want to heal as long as you get down and kiss their fucking ass. That's what they mean by heal. So we don't need to come forward, you know, 
the so what we have here is the government, Joe Manchin, demanded that Donald that Twitter remove Donald Trump's account. And what did Twitter do? Exactly what he told them to do. Because Twitter is afraid that, oh no, the Democrats are in power now. If I don't do what they want, they're going to come after me and my business now. And I can't have that. So I would argue that, and I'm waiting for a lawyer to make this argument, that this is a First Amendment violation. If the government of the United States orders or strongly encourages a private company to silence and censor another American, never mind the president, they did this, the president of the United States, and then that tech company does it on their behalf because they asked, are they not acting as an agent of the government? Are they not essentially the government at that point? And that to me is a First Amendment violation. So that's the argument you should use if you choose to use the words First Amendment when arguing this, bring up the Joe Manchin thing. And he ain't the only one. He's not the only one that got what he wanted. They all they all asked them to do it. Kamala Harris literally ran on a campaign of this. Now, watch this bullshit with like national security and, and safety. And those are the buzzwords that you're going to see now. Because it is very clear that they are going to milk this for years. They are going to declare white supremacy, a uh, national emergency. A public health threat. We have to do something about white nationalism. It's everywhere. I wake up every day and my biggest problem isn't finding a job or anything like that. It's white nationalism. Oh no. That's right. And, and it needs to be eradicated. They're going to treat white nationalists who I don't even fucking know any boy. Who the fuck's a white nationalist? Like, do you know any white nationalists like in your life and your day-to-day -day activities? No. I don't fucking know anything, but they're going to treat it like it is some thing that threatens all of our existence on a day-to-day -day basis. And you don't want that when there is a perceived enemy out there that can kill us all historically in this country, that is like a, an invitation for the government to strip you of your civil liberties for as long as possible until the threat is eliminated. We just, we're living in one right now with coronavirus. It's the same thing. Coronavirus is a national emergency. So we need to close your businesses and your kids can't go to school. National emergency. We've, they've done this over the years. Like they did in World War I. In World War II, the Japanese American, American citizens were literally told, you have to leave your home, board up your business, and move to a camp in Utah with other Japanese Americans because you can't be trusted. And this is a national emergency. That's what they're going to do. That's the way they're going to treat this. Get ready. <laughs> they haven't even taken office yet. They are going to declare war on your civil liberties. And they're going to use this as the example. It worked with 9-11, did it not? Think about this. We started a war in Iraq that went on for 10 years because of September 11th. And it had nothing to do with it. None of those hijackers came from Iraq. Not a single goddamn one. Saddam Hussein didn't make any of them do that. I don't even think Saddam Hussein's like a practicing Muslim. He didn't give a fuck about Allah. He was trying to get bitches and money. And we declare war on them for nothing. And we, it's worse off today than it was when we fucking got there. That they're going to use this and domestically they use it to, of course, uh, pass the Patriot Act. And people like Ron Paul were like, uh, I don't know if this is a good idea. And they're like, Shut up, Ron Paul. Ron Paul, by the way, is banned from Facebook. <laughs> Dr. Ron Paul, he's banned from Facebook for publicly speaking out against Dr. Fauci, President Fauci, rather. Remember him? So that's what you're going. That's what you saw during the Iraq war. That's what you saw after 9-11. You are about to see that on a much larger scale. Okay. Except they're no longer going after Muslims. They're going after people that look like me and people that voted for Donald Trump and are conservative. You are conservative. Now the government has every right or like reason and considering some of the people Biden's already hired, like he's hired guys that have been in Washington since the beginning of time. Old school guys. The swamp is back. These people are, are down for wiretapping.
They are Washington hacks. They are going to, if you get on their list as a potential white nationalist, you're putting other people in danger by your mere existence. And if you, if you told Americans this, that white nationalism is this huge issue and you pulled a bunch of like a hundred Americans and you asked them, would you favor the government tapping the phones of suspected white nationalists to find out if they were plotting something? Like 90% of people would be like, yes, definitely. Keep me safe, government. Thank you for keeping me safe. But they would just abuse it. They would they'd wiretap everybody. And that's what you're going to see. You're going to see that on a much larger scale. Getting rid of Trump on Twitter, if they're willing to do that, they'll do fucking anything. So anyway, back to the build your own company bullshit, right? People were telling me all the time, you got to get on MeWe. You got to get on Mines. You got to get on these things. You can't trust Facebook. Okay, I joined them. I posted a couple times. No one was there. So I'm like, this is stupid. There can never be a competitor to Twitter and Facebook because they don't have the infrastructure. They don't have the money. Like you need billions of dollars to start with to be able to compete with these companies. Get your name out there, the brand out there. You can't do it. You can't compete with these companies have become monopolies. There's no competition to Facebook. There's no competition to Twitter. Those are the only two companies that do social media. Apple, of course, is somewhat of a monopoly too. I mean, most Apple and Google have become the monopolies of phones. We all use phones for everything. And in order to get apps on your phone, you got to go to the app store, right? If you have an Apple phone, iPhone, you got to go in the app, app store. If you don't, then you go to Google Play and you download whatever. If you use the Turtle Boy app, you got it from one of those two, right? Those are the two providers. They have a monopoly on that. If they blacklist you from there, how are people going to download your shit? And nobody goes to websites anymore. This ain't 2014. This is 2021. Everything's on an app now. Like, if you're on your phone, does anybody go on, like, Facebook.com on Safari? Does anybody do that? My kids do that on YouTube. Like, I downloaded the app. Obviously, I have a YouTube app on my phone. And they still insist on going to fucking Safari. I'm like, what are you savages doing? Daddy, I like it, this one. You can, It's so much. What are you doing? But anyway. Besides my kids, everybody uses the goddamn app. But so, so they have a monopoly in that regard. And then Amazon is the biggest of all of them because they control everything. <laughs> Amazon controls like uh, the marketplace. You can get everything cheaper on Amazon, obviously. But they also do like, like a book was published on Amazon and they do hosting. They do website hosting because fuck it. Why not? Back in the day, and this is going to be one of my history podcasts, is comparing, like, what would Teddy Roosevelt do to these people? Uh, spoiler alert, he would have fucking broke the shit out of them. They wouldn't be allowed to get this big. They got this big, and they were unchecked. And when you get that big, it becomes impossible for anyone to grow and compete with you. It's literally impossible. Competition is the best part about capitalism, but we don't have that in the tech sphere. We don't have competition. Like, who is Google's competitor with search engines. Who's Google's competitor? DuckDuckGo? Ask Jeeves? Like who the hell? Bing? No. Yahoo? Who do, who do people go to besides that? Who is Facebook and Twitter's competitor for social media? Who is, um, app? I mean, Apple does everything, right? Apple does more than just computers. They do phones. They do all that shit. These companies, they do so many things that they're going to drive everybody else out of business in those things. And nobody enforces antitrust laws anymore because people like the product, right? We all like the product. It's good. Facebook's good. Twitter's good. We like using them. That's why we didn't really care when they bought Instagram. It was okay. We're not going to bust your balls about that. But anyway, back to this thing. Um, this, so they're going to start coming after this. And the idea was, well, a new company came along called Parler. And ever since some big names started getting kicked off of Twitter and Dan Bongino invested in Parler, there's been a big movement towards Parler. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And Parler, I want to say, had like 30 million users. It's not Facebook or Twitter, but it's growing. Like no, no other social media app has seen that kind of thing. They were the number one most downloaded app ahead of TikTok. 
ahead of uh, Signal, you name it, ahead of Facebook, most downloaded app. Um, and But the problem is if you ain't in the app store, 99% of apps are on Apple or Google Play. And so all of a sudden, you get all this pressure from the government, AOC. Good to see this development from Apple and Google Play. Are good to see the development from Apple. So Apple threatens to ban Parler from the store. Now, why don't they like Parler? Okay. Well, they'll tell you that we don't like Parler because they're inciting insurrection there. And there's white nationalists there. Because when you kick people out of something, they're not going to disappear. All you're doing is radicalizing them. They're going to go somewhere else. You can kick them off Parler. They're going to go somewhere. You cannot silence people, but for whatever, if you thought kicking them off of Twitter is what they really wanted, then you under, then you don't know shit about these people, the Democrats. They don't want, they don't, getting kicked off of Twitter is just step one. Their goal is to get you to shut the fuck up. That's what they really want for you. Just shut the fuck up and get in line. You can be a conservative if you want. Just keep it to yourself. And shut the fuck up. Don't spread those ideas anywhere. So they see parlors growing. And they're like, oh shit. Conservative ideas can be spreading over there. So what are we going to do? How are we going to stop them? Oh, I have an idea. Let's play the national security card. Let's say that, ooh, they have hate speech over there. And all this shit. And let's find fucking five random posts from people with five followers over there saying, White nationalism. We should invade the Capitol. Let's find some shit over there and be like, this is what's representative of the whole platform. I never saw anybody write that on. Who the hell are you following where you see this shit? I didn't see anything like that on Parler. It was just a conservative echo chamber. And that people gave me shit when I talked about Trump, talked badly about Trump. But I didn't see any like death threats on Parler or any of that shit. So AOC has decided though that... Um, you know, they the, the, once once they control the narrative, and the narrative is, Parler is all fucking crazy people talking about killing Mike Pence. That's dangerous. It's a national security. We got to do something about it. So Apple makes the move that they're thinking about not letting in in the store, and then AOC is like, "Oh, good job, Apple! Like, I applaud you, Apple. Good, good tech company. Good doggy." Good doggy, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Banning conservatives, that's good. Well, Google Play, like, you're not doing good, Google. Don't you want to do good? Don't you want to be on AOC's good list? Literally, that was on 1-8. This is on 1-9, the next day. Parlor app booted off the Google store and Apple, okay? After pro-Trump violence. Now, they still exist, though. I can still go on parlay.com on my computer. I just can't go on the app. So it still exists. And I actually grew, like, I got, like, 400 followers in one day after this shit. Well, somebody's got to host you. And as it turns out, Parler, when you get that big, there's only so many hosting companies that can hold that, you know, that, that type of traffic every day. And that's Amazon. Amazon's got the bandwidth to do it. They got the resources to do it. You got to go through them. So all of a sudden, Amazon, the fifth and evilest of them all, the tech companies, the biggest of them all, the richest of them all, they, uh, in an email obtained by BuzzFeed News, Amazon's trust and safety team told Parler that Amazon is unconvinced the platform's plan to use volunteers to moderate violent speech will be effective, and they are booting that they're no longer hosting them. Once you're not hosted by a hosting company, you cease to exist on the internet. That's how it works. If you, if you want to make a blog on your own, right, you could go to wordpress.com and create your own blog, right? And it would have dot wordpress.com at the end of it. And you would pay like 20 bucks for the domain or something like that. And they would host it for you. WordPress would take care of that for you. And once I went on my own, WordPress can't host for you anymore, right? So I use WordPress, but they don't do my hosting. My audience, they, they couldn't handle it anyway. So I got to go and I got to I use a company called WP Engine for my hosting. If I was as big as Parler was, I, WP Engine couldn't do the job for me. And I have to go to like a bigger company like Amazon because 
not many competitors. Monopolies don't have competitors. So once Amazon decides that I, I'm not hosting anymore, you literally cease to exist. You cease to exist. Now, what the fuck did Parler do wrong? Even if there were crazy people writing crazy shit on Parler, how the fuck is that Parler's fault? They didn't write it. That's like saying I'm responsible for the comments on my web, on my page. It's literally the same fucking thing. I didn't write those goddamn comments. Why am I responsible? Well, you didn't moderate it enough. Why the fuck is it my job to moderate it? If you see something illegal, call the cops. That's how this shit should work. Call the cops. If you see something that's against the law, you see a death threat, call the cops. So that's not enough for these fucking idiots, though. They're so stupid and they just don't see their bigger picture and they don't understand how any of this works that they think this is a good thing. If you're cheering this on, you're a fucking idiot. There's no other way around it. You're an idiot. You have no idea the course of events that is about to take place and you're naive if you think they will not come for you. If they won't come for you, eventually you will be labeled as hate speech too. That's how this works. We are taking down statues of goddamn Abraham Lincoln. Eventually, they will take down statues of Barack Obama. It will fucking happen. Believe me. It will happen. Unless people stand up and say no. No, 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 no. That's why I'm even against taking down like conservative, I mean, uh, Confederate statues. Not that I like the Confederacy. I actually hate them. But like, I just don't like the precedent that it sets. Like, no, I I know you people are never satisfied. So I feel I'm giving you dick. That's the best thing you can give these people. Fucking nothing. Even if it goes against your own beliefs and values. Don't give them fucking shit. Ever. So, the media has told us, of course, now, that Parler is somehow responsible for this. Parler didn't invade the Capitol. They didn't do shit. But they've been blamed for this. So, I decided to do what no one else in the media did. And that is, go through the names of, there's been like 80-something people arrested so far. And just see what they were doing that day. Research them. I spent hours researching this. And most of the people that were arrested didn't post on social media at all. Some of them, like one guy who was arrested, right? He threatened to murder Nancy Pelosi. And he uh, sent text messages saying that. That's how they got him. He sent text messages. Talking about pipe bombs he had. Is Verizon responsible for that or AT&T? Did they not sell him? Did they not send him, like, allow him to communicate that on their platform? Is he going to be banned from Verizon? No, of course not. Because we would never do that to a phone company. So why do we do it to the other tech companies? Why do we expect them? Like, what if one of these people had sent a death threat on Gmail? Why? Why Why should I like, imagine that? You, how? How is Gmail not? If you sent a death threat on Gmail to someone else, according to this logic, Gmail is responsible for that. You hosted this. You didn't do enough to ban this person. It's your fault. And Parler's a new company. They're growing fast. How the fuck are they supposed to have an army of people doing content moderation? How the fuck are they supposed to do that? It's just not realistic and it's not fair to just do it overnight. Well, But national security. It's an emergency. We got to get rid of Parler. So I decided to go through. I'm like, okay, so Parler's being blamed for this. Let's see how much of the insurrection was started on air. Okay, here's this guy, the Nancy Pelosi desk guy. Where was he at? Let's see what he did. Uh, he was uh, posting on Facebook about it. Okay, yep, there he is, posting Facebook pictures about insurrection. Okay, good. This guy, an attorney from Texas. Guest. That was not fun. All we're doing is demanding that the public officials audit the vote, audit the Dominion machines, audit the ballots. There's a way to do it. We can solve this in two days. If this was a legitimate election, then let us inspect it. And, let, and if it's, if Biden won. Yeah, so this guy's a, a lawyer, by the way. <laughs> I probably wouldn't hire him. But he posted that on Instagram, owned by Facebook. And you got, uh, what do we got down here? Rick Saccone, former congressional candidate, posting about insurrection on Facebook. In insurrection. Adam Johnson, this guy's famous, the guy, the uh, podium guy. <laughs> he posted about it on Facebook. He was a Facebook guy. He posted all about it. Then you got this guy, Doug Jensen, the guy that followed the security guy. Look at these motherfuckers. Jesus Christ. Uh, there he is in the Capitol starting shit. Uh, he posted all about it on Twitter. West Virginia State Rep Derek Evans live streamed the whole thing on Facebook 
another on Facebook. How about this guy? Nick Ox from Hawaii. He stuck to Twitter. He posted his insurrection from Twitter. Oh, then you had this broad here. Christina Malamon. Oh, God. These TP USA people, these young conservatives. I fucking hate them. Don't get me started on them, too. Um, Donald Trump is my president, and socialism is bad. I'm like so against socialism and the radical Democrats. I hate the radical Democrats. It's just so cookie cutter bullshit. Some of these people. Anyway, she uh, she did a little insurrection of herself. She posted uh, footage on her Instagram story of Trump uh, speaking on stage. Um, she shared it uh, in ahead of the riot. She shared encouragement uh, to join in her protest on the nation's capital. And blah, 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 blah. There she is. Boom. She got arrested too. She did it all on Instagram. Okay. Then this chick, Zandra Six Killer Kramer. Nice name. I think that's really her fucking name. Uh, she uh, fomented insurrection on Twitter and Facebook. We have Baked Alaska here, uh, who's already banned from, he's banned from Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. So he has to go on D Live. D Live, and they he did it there too. And D Live is not being banned. Nobody's shutting down B Live. Uh, Jenny Cuddy, uh, she is a Facebook broad, I believe. Uh, there she is, right there, fomenting some insurrection. David Fitzgerald on Facebook. Uh, there he is. <laughs> this guy posted his insurrection stuff there. Cindy Fitchett was a Twitter chick. Chad Burmeister. Blah, blah, blah. Now, I could have just kept doing this. I could have kept doing this. And by the way, this cunt, Cheryl Sandberg from Facebook, actually writes this. I want to smack her. I think these events were largely organized on platforms that don't have our abilities to stop hate and don't have our standards and don't have our transparency. You fucking cunt. You millionaire fucking elitist cunt. I fucking hate these people so much. They don't have our abilities to stop hate. Like, it's your fault fucking job to stop hate who the fuck are you you the fuck are you you work for a nerdy dude who made a website because he couldn't jack off to chicks in person so he wanted to fucking make fun of them and mock the way they look that's how fucking facebook started that's it and he got fucking lucky let's be perfectly honest right place right time it's not your job who the fuck are you to think that it is your job to stop the spread of hate speech on the internet and don't have our standards or our transparency. What fucking standards do you have? The Christchurch massacre guy in New Zealand two years ago, literally for 17 minutes, live streaming himself, killing people, and it didn't get shut down. D their AI didn't didn't pick up on that somehow. We've seen ProPublica did a study that shows over 50% of reported of, of 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 stuff that violates Facebook's content standards, if you report it, it doesn't get taken down. We've all done this before, where we've reported something to Facebook, and then it's obviously a violation of their community standards, and they don't take it down. We saw it this summer, like um, there's a pedophilia page. Remember that? We all reported it. They didn't take it down. It's bullshit. And then, of course, we've seen all the shit we've been taken down for. <laughs> like, look at this shit. Peace, love, and happiness to all. Remember that one? How about this? Uh, the infamous one that led to it all coming down. This one. That was the one. Our profile picture of a Thanksgiving turkey. Or this was taken down on Christmas fucking day. Christmas day. A Christmas tree was taken down. New Year's Eve. Take it down. I would test it out. I'd say something you should do every day is tell someone who has been there for you that you love and appreciate them and then give them a hug. This was taken down for sexual services and solicitation of sexual material. There you go. And by the way, all our Congress, my congressman, this fucking clown, Jim McGovern, literally did the same thing that all these other senators and congressmen did the other day. Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz, that is, you know, they're being accused of fomenting insurrection and they're traitors and they should resign. And I'm, I look it up. I'm like, wait a minute. They did the same thing four years ago. They literally objected to the electors, the same fucking thing. The, the, their ability, their, the same shit with Black Lives Matter. It's like they've forgotten everything they did or they just don't care or they're just gaslighting you because they know you're a fucking idiot. And that's the, that's the real reason why is they know that the most people that vote for them are stupid. So if I just lie to them, they won't fucking know. They won't remember I did the same shit four years ago. They won't remember that shit. The media is not going to tell them either. 
So literally, I have to write this myself. This this blog got a lot of traffic today because no one else is writing about it. No one else is writing about it. So anyway, anyway, why don't we do a little Ask Turtle Boy? If you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to ask. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, answer whatever I can. I know that. <laughs> Andrew, I, I got that from Dwight too. <laughs> Jim asked that. There's no fomenting insurrection in the office. Question. What if we've already begun to foment insurrection? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Anything else? Did you watch the national championship? No, I didn't. I, I didn't know it was on so early. I didn't see it, but I saw Bama one. I saw people were partying in the streets of Tux Tuscaloosa and I saw it upset liberals. So I'm, I'm here for that. As the kids say these days, I'm here for that. Alabama is a dynasty. They've won six of the last 12 national titles in football. Nobody's done that. You've seen in college football schools like USC, USC. I remember USC was good for like three or four years. They were nasty. Remember Nebraska in the nineties. They were like the dominant team when I was a kid. Nebraska was. And then they get Florida State had some years there. Florida. But nobody's done what Alabama's done. It's insane what they're doing right now. I don't know what you mean by that question. Uh, yeah, the golf tourney. So it's going to be, I believe it's May 24th. So we're going to be coming back with that. Lee is definitely helping out with that. Um, we're back, baby. I wish they would ban Indian dudes that slide in women's DMs every three days asking for pics of bobs that easily. Yeah, well, if you think those Indians guys are bad, where do you meet this guy, John, for a solo? Hmm. All right, anything else, guys? Who's in the Super Bowl? Bill's Bucks. Me and Jerry agree. Bill's Bucks. As long as it, the the only team that I really don't want to see win, the only one, is the Ravens. They fucking hate the Ravens. The Ravens and the Steelers are the two teams I just never want to see them win ever, ever. I fucking hate those two teams. Um, and they hate each other too. The Chiefs I can stomach for like another year or two, and then they'll eventually get old to me. I guess if they win, I find the Rams incredibly boring. But if they won, good for them. If any of the other three teams wins out of the NFC, it's a good story, right? Aaron Rodgers winning his second because he's only got one. Drew Brees winning his second because he's only got one. Or Tom Brady winning his seventh with the second team. Any of those would be huge stories. The only two teams that are left that have never won a Super Bowl before are the Bills and the Browns, two of the worst franchises in NFL history, the jokes of the NFL. So those would be good stories too. The only, it would just be such a, so basically any of the teams winning, like, you know, Mahomes winning back to back would be cool too. Any of these would be good stories except for the Ravens winning. That would be a shitty fucking story. Nobody wants to see the goddamn Ravens wins. That would just be sucky, sucky, sucky. Can we talk about Peter 2.0? Which, who's that? That will be more specific. How about Pats having both quarterbacks in that Bucks Washington game? Do we really? Do we have Heineke too? Who am I missing there? Was Heineke really on the Patriots? The Saints. Uh, I mean, the Saints winning would be a good story, I guess. I guess. We've seen the Saints win before. We really got robbed two years ago when it should have been Saints. Patriots in the Super Bowl. We got robbed of a great Super Bowl there. It might be a little late for the Saints. I don't know. Anything else? Lions, Browns are the worst two franchises. At least the Bills went. That's true. And they had OJ. But yes, those are two of the worst franchises of all time. Like literally the Panthers and the and the Jacksonville Jaguars got to the conference championship games, their second year in the league. <laughs> the Lions can't even make the goddamn playoffs. He was a pra I did not know that. We had Heineke. Huh? That's interesting. All right. Anything else, guys, before we call it a night? 
The fucked up mom abuser. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to that one. Save that for Saturday. Yeah, you know what? That's a good point, Jeff. I kind of hope Drew Brees doesn't win it. Because remember he had fucking the rapist on his helmet at the beginning of the year, Jacob Blake? Fuck Drew Brees. Now that I think about it, fuck Drew Brees. OJ does have some... He does have... Like, I, 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 I tune, into, tune into OJ's Twitter. He makes videos every day. And he talks about, like, politics and sports. And he ends everything with, just saying... And all you can think about is this dude literally hacked his wife and that dude to death. But he's kind of entertaining at the same time. Anyway. All right. If nobody has any more questions, will the Super Bowl be a big deal this year? Yeah, because it's in Florida. That's why anything in Florida is going to be good. Anything in Florida is going to be good. All right, um, so I guess that's it for the night, guys. Um, we will, uh, I guess we will see you guys all on the next episode of Turtle Boy Live on Thursday. Peace, Turtle Riders.